episode of Swish Pan. Swish Pan! Swish Pan! Swish Pan! Swish Pan. Swish Pan. Is that enough? Yes. Okay, I'm Shane Orman, this is Danny McDragon. Uh, what? That's not your real name, is it? Yes. That's what I'm reading on the cue card here. It says your name is Danny McDragon. Yeah, it's Scottish Celtic um, with a hint of Asian mysticism. That's what they call my father anyway. <sighs> All right, so apparently we're going with that. Um, <laughs> what do you have for us tonight, Danny? Um, Justin Bieber uh, groped some breasts this week. In, uh, what do you mean? What? What do you mean? I what? just said it. Yeah, well, you interrupted whether it was an eh or not. I didn't uh, realise you were going to continue. Well, I didn't realise you were going to continue interrupting, okay. so I suppose that's another thing. It, it, it <laughs> seems like we, talk about, like we talk about Justin Bieber a lot. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is an entertainment show, and if you want quality entertainment, this is the place to yeah. find it. it and, but it's more so like Justin Bieber just you see, doing... You're still doing the thing But he's just doing stuff. This is an intro. Do you know the purpose of an intro? Are you going to read the whole thing? I, I might read... Uh, who's right, reading? Fine. These Go are on. trouser notes. Oh, Justin Bieber groped a fan's breasts. Can no, I say no, no, yeah, well, obviously, okay, you could, I right, thought you were going to say something that time. All right, well, like, good for him. You know what? <coughs> Power to him. You know, yeah. Charlie Sheen can, like, drink chocolate milk with a porn star. You know, <laughs> it's fine. Justin Bieber can grope a woman's what breast. Does drink chocolate milk mean? Is that an analogy for something? No, there's, like, a picture of, of Charlie Sheen. He, his first ever tweet was him with chocolate milk and a porn star. Right. It's a good picture. Right. Uh, Spice Girls fan was evicted for overplaying the track Viva Forever this week. Just, just that one track? The one track. Uh, January 2012, he got his first notice, um, basically saying he had to stop playing the Spice Girls at such a high, intense volume at all hours of the morning. How long do you have to play the same song over and over again to get evicted? 12 months. 12 months? <laughs> 12 of months. fucking Viva Forever? Uh, he, he also got an ASBO, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for noise pollution. Yep. And then on top of that, uh, the council finally evicted him. Uh, that's, that's a fanatic. No, that's, he, that man is a danger to society. Yeah, and, okay, right. You know, Viva, you know, Viva Forever is, is, is actually not the worst song. So if he was uh, evicted from the count by, by the county council, does that mean he was, he was living in a council house? No, every uh, like most places that are a county and have a council would. Okay. Yeah. But so he's homeless now. I wouldn't say that. I just no. he had to up and leave to go somewhere else. Anyway, this is the longest. That doesn't really solve the problem though. He's going to be just playing it somewhere else. Can I just get through the news? Yeah. Thanks, uh, Rick Ross. If anyone knows who he is, I know you don't. I don't know who Rick Ross. He's is. a gangster rapper. Well, he likes to. He's a big rapper. Yeah. Okay. He's big. He's black. He means business. And uh, basically, he, um, he claimed that there was a drive-by shooting yeah. that led to him having a car crash. Yeah. Right. So in my mind, right, <laughs> what I was thinking here, the only situation, you know, it's, how likely is it that a gangster rapper is going to encounter a drive-by shooting? I, I, don't gangster rappers all die by drive-by shooting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you wouldn't. You wouldn't so you're think saying twice. this is he was like falsifying an insurance claim. I think he faked a drive-by shooting. Yeah, I think he. I think he was drink driving. He knocked into a wall, and he he claimed that he, it was a drive-by shooting. He just went, you know, who's going to argue with that? Yeah, because I'm a gangster rapper. Like it's just like a hazards of the job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And power to him if he got away with it. <laughs> Lady Gaga this week was stripped of 156 million. Uh, YouTube views, which is just disheartening, isn't it? <laughs> Why was she stripped of, of Facebook views? Because she was faking the views. So Lady Gaga was like going to Facebook. Just hit and refresh. And she was just like... Hit and refresh. Come on. Re she could have at least changed her IP address, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, you know she has the time in her hands. No. And we talked last week or possibly the week before about her appreciation for canine art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's she, become an entrepreneur in the matter. She's been uh, strapping markers to her dogs. Uh, yeah, and they've been doing paintings that have been selling for, you know, I'd buy one. If you I know, had the money. Like, when she does that, that's news. But when I do that, they call, like, <laughs> PETA. <laughs> get the RSPCA in. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to come over to my house later and strap some markers to my dog? On the record, no. Uh, Britney Spears is no longer allowed to use the internet. <laughs> Why? Because they're afraid she'll top herself. Who, who said that? Her mom? Or? Uh, no, she's various minders now. In fact, her previous husband was actually, uh, I don't know what the legal term is for it, but he looked after her cash and... Uh, and her welfare, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
What, well, why isn't she allowed on the internet if, if they're scared she's going to Because gonna they're herself. afraid that if she reads something very bad about herself, like <laughs> yeah. the kind of stuff I've been writing, she's going to top herself. Yeah, well, if you're Britney Spears... Which isn't Spears, actually you, funny at all. You're going to have to, you what, know... Why are you laughing? Bear criticism. Because you fucking wrote it! Right, moving on. So, we're going to roll our first clip this evening. <sighs> <laughs> this is your favourite boy, Tom Cruise. Will I do my Tom Cruise impression? That's your Tom Cruise impression? Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry, I meant to go... The name of the movie, Martin, is Oblivion. It's Oblivion. It's Oblivion. Fucking hell. Um, no, I'm not a big fan of Tom Cruise. Why not? He, do, he doesn't really have a range. Like, he, he very much plays Tom Cruise in a lot of films. And we had this discussion that last week, and I know he was great in Collateral, and he was great in... Interview with a Vampire. Interview with a Vampire. But in this film, he's just Tom Cruise. Um, he actually, we, can they hear us? He actually yeah. wears a baseball hat in this one, Shane. He does wear a baseball hat. So... But he's just like looking like Tom Cruise. He's the same haircut as he does in every other film. And he's just running around saving the world. So? Uh, okay, it looks like a cool trailer. Yeah. All right, I, I honestly, I am going to see it. I love sci-fi and I jump at the chance to see any sci-fi movie. I don't think it's going to be brilliant. Can I be rude and ask, are we being heard? Yes, we are being heard. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and the trailer's being seen? All right, uh, okay, that was fantastic. Uh, what do you think? I, I, I think it's cool. Like, it, it looks cool. I don't think I'm going to see it and go, like, I have to see that again immediately. Here's the fear in my mind, right? The, the trailer looks cool, yeah. but the director's only previous kind of big budget endeavor was Tron Legacy. Yeah. What had that got going for it? It looked cool. Tron Legacy was really cool. And it looked it, cool, it, but was it a good movie? It's famous for looking so cool that people will kind of watch it regardless of whether they think it's a good movie or not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had that Daft Punk soundtrack and they, like, just gelled really well. It, it, as a trailer, we talk about this constantly, it was perfect. Cool trailer. Yeah, bad movie. I Go. like anything with Jeff Bridges in it as well. <sighs> he was barely in it. Yeah. CGI Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Actually, I'd pay to see that again. We'll just, we'll just get him in. <laughs> CGI. <laughs> just phone in the, the... I think it's amazing how the power of Scientology has brought Tom Cruise once again into the... You know, I mean, there's so many reasons to dislike the man. Um, one of the leaders of the church has, has um, called Tom Cruise the most important uh, man to Scientology in the world. Yeah, I actually, I you're think quoting they, me from last week's yeah, show. I think yeah. they see him as, as a messiah. <laughs> like, well, but he is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is the messiah. Like, he's just doing these movies to get enough money to put together the spaceship, and then they'll all be off. Yeah. Sort that out. Oh, do you think that's CGI? No, that's the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's got like a little plant. The first thing I thought of was Wally, like just with Tom Cruise. Oh, like no. that's probably how they pitched it. Yeah, like yeah. A, a, a real life adaptation Wally, of Wally. Tom Cruise, give us two hundred million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise. Uh, shall we take a look at another trailer? Yeah, let's do. It. And this one, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know how I feel about it because it's Brian Singer who's done some great things. The Usual Suspects. Yeah. I mean, what a debut film. You talking about Jack the Giant Killer? I am unfortunately talking about <laughs> Jack the Giant. Now, this film has been gestating and going through all kinds of edits. And you think when a film is delayed, which it has been for about at least a year from its original release date, yeah. that you're going to look at something with CGI, the computer, the graphics are going to absolutely blow your mind. But it looks like. Yeah, it, lo Shit. it looks a little lazy. Like the, there's nothing there you haven't seen before. It looks kind of like the or the goblins or orcs or whatever. They just look like Lord of the Rings orcs. Um, they're all CGI. Do you, do you not feel that we're getting to a point with uh, computer generated imagery that like we've gone too far and it's now time to revert back to just simple old Hollywood tricks? You know. Okay. You expecting someone? The legends are true. Prepare for battle! Fire! Ready? Yeah. Jump! Here comes the thunder. That worked out better than I expected. Jack the Giant Slayer. This film is not yet rated. In real D 3D and IMAX 3D March 1st. You see, like, Singer gave us those two great X-Men movies. You say two great X-Men films, but what you mean is two good X-Men films. Yeah, well, no, I really enjoyed them, and I, I, I give them a rewatch, and that second one, I thought, was, was actually very, very good. Yeah, and it if, was you, if you wanted to be taken seriously in your profession as, as, a, as a movie critique, yeah. would you have said they were excellent films? Oh, I think they're great. I, I honestly do. I fucking, like, I love the X-Men, and I think he did them justice in those two Can films. Can you watch your language, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could get fired. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She's keeping on. <laughs> um, 
but it doesn't look like anything special. But he does he does a good blend of action and comedy. Um, you think, know, I like the little lines. This, this all I can say is he's lucky he has his next gig directing already looked after yeah. because when this hits, it's gonna bomb. Yeah. There's no, there, for me, there's no appeal. Um, Absolutely no. I'll watch it purely because it's a Brian Singer film. What's he done before this? He did Superman Returns. That bombed. He did Valkyrie. That bombed. Do you know what was weird about Superman Returns? Is Everything. That it, just, it looked really good, but nothing happened in the movie. He it found was, out he had a son. It was like the least superman movie ever. He was just floating around a bit. And he wasn't Superman for most of it as well. Oh man, I, it was I, like I really enjoyed it as a film, but yeah. I th- like we we talked about this again. We're repeating ourselves a lot, but I think it's so important. The image of the superhero is kind of everything. It makes the fucking movie. Yeah. If you don't, don't want to turn around a mirror one day and look like that superhero, then it's not doing its job. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And it's a pity. I mean, look at me. Because I thought that guy was he wasn't a bad choice for soups. Um, no, but he looked more like Christopher Reeves than he did like Superman, and yeah. therein lied the fault. That's what they did. They just kind of chased someone that, that yeah. looked like Yeah, oh, him. you look like... And they want to make it like, oh, here we are back with the same character. You know, they tried to make a sequel to those original movies. He was great as Todd, though, in um, the uh, Scott Pilgrim movie. Yeah, yeah, he was good at being an asshole, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's pretty good at it in real life, too. Um, okay, we're going to take a look at the final trailer. Yeah. Uh, this is Bullet to the Head, um, starring Sylvester Stallone, and the title could actually probably be our review. <laughs> Bullet to the head. It just like I mean, it just echoes that Arnold Schwarzenegger trailer that came out. It's just they're they're returning to the action movie genre. They seems to be kind of like after the Expendables came out. There's a market for that now. And like you watch the trailer, it's a typical action movie. And then someone makes a comment on how they're old now. It's we like, are old. I am old. I may be yeah. old, but I can still do this. Yeah, exactly. And they make I, the exact same. They they old. You know, uh, uh, Stallone was actually arrested uh, by Australian customs for bringing a huge, huge amount of illegal uh, fucking shoot 'em ups. What? Heroin? Steroids. Steroids. Oh. Sorry, steroids. Yeah. I'm looking at them. It pays. It's paid off. Actually, yeah. Let's roll the clip. Yeah, yeah. work. I take out the trash. First, Detective Taylor Kwan. I want the guy who's into your daughter. Dad? We can help each other out. He may be older. Hey, you mind if we listen to something from this century? But when it comes to revenge, he hasn't lost his edge. What are we, Vikings? You don't just kill a guy like that! I just did. Bullet to the head, rated R, February 1st. I lick my tits, that was bad. Mm-hmm, yeah. I, I don't see what's wrong with, with Sylvester Stallone using steroids. It's not like he's competing. Uh, like you know, actors should well, be but he to is essentially fun. competing. If you look at Schwarzenegger, looks haggard, right? Yeah. He looks absolutely beat up. But at least you know that's probably the real Schwarzenegger. Whereas yeah. this man does steroids. He's 65 now, I think, and he's had a serious amount of plastic surgery. Yeah, he does. Kind of, he looks like Mickey Rourke's arse at this stage. Like Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mickey Rourke looks like his own ass at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah I, I, you know, I, I'm afraid we're going to run out of time before we talk about some, some interesting things, such as Paul, Verho- Paul Verhoeven, the director of River Cup, uh, Total Recall, also starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll get to that point in a moment, yep. and the inimitable Showgirls is hoping <laughs> to re-team with Arnold Schwarzenegger for The Legend of Conan. Yeah, I'd, I'd watch that. Like, I'm a big fan of Robocop. Yep. Uh, big f- loved um, the Mars one. What was that? Uh, Total Recall. Yeah. Not a big fan of insect war movie. Um, Starship Troopers? Starship Troopers, no. You don't understand it, so... I don't understand it. I get it. Like, we're being satirical. But, like, you can be satirical and make a good movie at the same time. Like killing them softly. Yeah, like killing them softly. Right. Like, you, you don't have to do the terrible dialogue to do a satirical movie. Uh, no, but it's, it's the whole experience. What, what he's making, uh, uh, like, it's, it's not so much a satirical movie as it is a fucking balls-out <laughs> B-movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is great. I love it. Killer insects, fucking guns, and absolutely incredible score. By, yeah. Yeah, uh, the same guy who did the music for Robocop. Don't remember his name, unfortunately. I, I'd, I'd watch it drunk, and I'd probably enjoy it a lot. But you do I'm, a lot of things drunk, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'd, I'd pull it out and watch it when I'm sober, though. Definitely not. Because, uh, yeah, I would with Robocop. Yeah, that's a rewatcher though, isn't it? That's great. And that I'd was meant- buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be a satire as well, but I, I just thought it held together better as an actual real movie. That even if you didn't know it was satire, you were like, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I won't say a bad word against Robocop. That shit with the arms being blown off and like, ah! 
Your superhero can't run. He's just like walking everywhere. Like, wait up. There's a lot of that though, isn't there? Robocop Terminator. He's just kind of power walking after them. Yeah, but with that music, you wouldn't want to get running, you know. You see the new um the new Robocop costume? Yeah. It looks like Batman. Yeah, everything looks like Batman now. Yeah. When your pierce is coming out. Uh, right, J.J. Abrahams, the director of the new Star Trek franchise. Uh, Jay Brams. Jay Brams. He has been announced as the director of Star Wars Episode Seven. much to my glee. Yeah. I feel like singing and dancing. Mm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved what he did with the Star Trek film, and he said he definitely wasn't going to do Star Wars. Yeah. So it's a big surprise that he did. I yeah. presume they just, like, threw money at him. Well, they didn't just throw money at him. What they did was they actually, without him, like they set up a meeting, he turned it down and went, no, that's crazy. Yeah. I'd Lord rather go as a spectator. He actually commented officially. And then on the 15th of December, Kathleen Turner, who was in charge of the whole operation yeah. um, for Disney, uh, who's, you know, they bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion, Yes, yes. And um, she basically made him an offer that was just so, you know, he could not refuse. Ludicrous. It was ludicrous. Basically, uh, they had consulting was the writer of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And then they had the writer of Little Miss Sunshine and Toy Story 3 on board. And they had all, they just like, look, uh, this is who we've got on board. Yeah. And by the end of it, he was just, got, you know, uh, it's just insane news. I can't, they've actually, they've split up the three movies. I presume it's going to be more collaborative than this, but they have split up the main writing duties between the three writers that they brought on for one movie each. Um, so the Little Miss Sunshine guy is going to be heading up the writing on one of those, which would be interesting mm, to that? see. Yeah, really? no, I, I uh, read that, yeah. Oh, really? Um, and Did you read it in a book that you wrote? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Empire Strikes Back guy didn't write uh, Return didn't of the write Jedi. That, no? no, he didn't write Return of the Jedi. He wrote a draft of it, and then it was, it was heavily revised. And but he, he wrote yeah. a version where everyone dies, like, except for Luke. Right. Yeah. And then Robert Rodriguez, the director of lots of great movies, uh, has said that he would direct a solo San Han Solo movie. <laughs> Oh, okay, but you'd have to get it, obviously, in a new Han Solo. Mm. Like, you'd have to get in a new yeah, actor. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be lame. Is there oh. anyone, though, that you would say, like, hmm, maybe? Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman, brilliant. No. Um, let's talk about Superman Lives. That's going to be the meat of this Superman show. Superman Lives, yeah. They if you guys can roll up some of those JPEGs soon, let's get a long stay on them, because we got a lot to talk about in this. Um, this, this Superman uh, Lives, or Superman Reborn, depending on which script you're referring to, yeah. was basically first come to fruition around 1996, 1997, yeah? Yeah. And, I mean, look at that. That is Nicolas Cage wearing latex. He's straight off the set of Con Air. It's look at that. That is Tim Burton's yeah. Superman. It's uh, incredible, though, that none of the Superman suits look anything like the Superman suit. Yeah, well, I think that's probably a good thing, though. I mean, I, look, I, at, look that. at this. Look this, at that. This is the, I'll tell you, because I read some of the script the other week. Yeah. What happens is that Superman somehow or another loses all his powers, right? Yeah. And then Brainiac or something basically becomes the costume yeah. to give him his powers again. Okay. And so... I don't know, apparently he can't fly, he doesn't have the costume, and above all else, he had to fight a giant spider. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's what the script dictated. Uh, and uh, Tim Burton doesn't like comic books. He, says, he thinks he's above them, and he's, he's infamously said that like, he, he doesn't like comic books. Yeah, he he's never read a comic book. Yeah, he just draws little doodles of himself constantly. Yeah. Um, Didn't he release an art show that was basically really bad comics without a plot? Oh, yeah. He has a book as well, The, the Adventures of Oyster Boy or something. Oyster or the, the Melancholy yeah. Adventures of Oyster yeah, Boy. Yeah, boring. So sick of Tim Burton. Ha, have point. you seen his... There's, like, sketches of Superman um, that he did for this, and it's, like, it's just Johnny Depp, like, typically wearing a Superman suit, and, like, you've got a skinny Superman. Yeah, I mean, Superman. Goth thank, Superman. Thank God this movie was never made. It would be amazing, like, drunk movie to take out and watch it, like, back-to-back -back with Demolition Man and Face Off. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> You wouldn't, I, I guarantee you. Why would, Demolition Man? Well, that's a great movie, but yeah, like, you know, it's movie. Wesley Snipes and, and Sylvester Stallone frozen in time, and then they get out one and it's like, only someone from the 90s could catch a criminal from the 90s. Yeah, and then the three seashells. We never even learned how to use the three seashells. <laughs> I love the three seashells. Do you know I once went into a house, if you don't know this reference, I'm sorry, but in Demolition Man, uh, they, they, in, instead of using the toilet, they have something called a system. They're like, you don't know how to use the three seashells. Hey, this guy doesn't know how to use the three seashells. And that's how you wipe your arse in the future with yeah. three seashells. I actually have been in two occasions where they had three seashells on top of a cistern. Yeah. 
That's all I have to add to that. We should. I'm, I think I'm going to do that when I have a house. Seashells. I'm just going to put three seashells there and then hide the toilet paper. I think that's all we have time for tonight. What? Yeah, it's a uh, pity. So, if anyone out there can tell us who Michael Douglas is, yep. this will be your prize. It's a signed picture of me. It says, uh, from one sexy bastard to another. And Breed, you're not allowed to enter. You've already entered three times. Uh, you can email us at whoismichaeldouglas at gmail.com. Okay. What's up?